Good afternoon. Hi, my name is Megan McCormick. Every year there are thousands of crashes. Most of these in crashes involve young drivers and also elderly drivers. Most of us would probably think that the younger drivers have the highest crash rate, but this is not true. According to smartmotorist.com, statistics show that in two vehicle Fatal crashes involving an older and a younger driver, it is 3.1 times likely that the vehicle driven by the older driver will be the one that's involved in the crash. Today I will tell you why elderly drivers, why elderly driving can be very dangerous and some steps that we can take to ensure our safety as drivers on the road and also the safety of elderly drivers that are on the road. First, let's start with why it can be so dangerous for an elderly driver. Research on age-related driving concerns has shown that at the age of 65, drivers face an increased risk of being involved in a vehicle crash. After the age of 75, the risk of a driver's fatality increases dramatically because older drivers are more vulnerable to crash-related injury and death. I'm sure all of us know an older person in our life um, that we have known for a while and have been able to see them age through the years. For instance, I have a grandmother who is 80 years old and she still drives every day and actually still works every day. Um, and this isn't always the case. Some people may experience health issues when they're in their 50s that could possibly make them be an unsafe driver. And then there's people that are in their 80s or 90s that are still physically and mentally capable of driving a vehicle safely. Um, but as we know, health and as you get older, you just age naturally. You can't react to things as quickly as you used to. Um, you may have tur trouble turning your neck or your back to see behind you or to look in your rearview mirrors. You see the older people move slower as they walk. And these are things that just naturally happen to most adults as they reach a certain age. Um, <clears throat> At what point do we, as a family member or a friend or even just someone in the community, step in and find other ways for our elders to be transported instead of driving themselves? Um, is it the family's job to step in and take control over the keys or the vehicle of an elder? Is it the doctor's job to sign off on a piece of paper saying, yes, this patient is physically and mentally capable of operating a vehicle? Or should it be up to our local DMV whether a person is capable of still safely driving a vehicle? Um, the problems of elderly drivers and the risk of driving may have many solutions, but I have proposed a solution that I think will work. Did you know that according to IIHS.org, Kentucky has no special guidelines whatsoever for renewing your license and it doesn't matter if you're 80, 90, 100 years old, you don't do anything differently than someone that's 20 something that goes in to renew their license. Um, some states do have certain things that they do like you can't send in a renewal through the mail, you have to do it in person, but Kentucky really doesn't have any special guidelines like that. I feel at the age of 70, a driver who wishes to renew their license should bring a statement from an eye doctor. We all know that it's important to get a yearly eye exam and to have the proper prescription glasses or corrective lenses in. I mean, driving is or seeing is a really important part of being able to drive safely. Also, I think that a driver over the age of 70 should have a statement from their doctor. If we could just make one form that all doctor's offices would have, just as if 
you were going to get a physical from your doctor um, to sign off on saying, yes, this patient is still mentally and physically capable, capable of operating the vehicle. And um, finally, I think that at the age of 70, a driver should be required to renew their license every two years because we know that um, health problems and aging issues can happen very quickly and things can change very quickly after you reach a certain age like that. Family, friends, and caretakers should also be involved in deciding when a loved one maybe not is not so safe driving anymore. Um, there are warning signs that a driver <clears throat> might not be a safe driver any longer. According to the National Safety Commission and AA AARP, the following warning signs of an elder might need to surrender their license. Feeling uncomfortable or nervous or fearful while driving, dents and scratches on garage doors, um, fences that it might be near the home, on the car itself, on mailboxes, getting lost while they're out driving, not being able to find their way back home or not going to where they were originally leaving to go to, slower responses to unexpected situations, frequent, quote, close calls, trouble judging gaps in traffic distances, you know, approaching a stoplight or entering onto an exit or on-ramp or exit ramp, and other drivers honking at you because you're driving way under the speed limit or you're not paying attention and going at the light, um, <clears throat> and having a hard time turning around and checking over your shoulder. Getting older and losing one's independence can be a very difficult thing. Some elders may realize on their own that they're no longer safe driving and will surrender their license on their own. But others who want to hold on to that independence just a little bit longer, they may know that they're not safe, but they're just still not willing to give up that independence. There is a place called caregiverslist.com, and they have geriatrics case managers and it's not just about related driving issues, but also just issues of aging. And they help people, family, friends, um, talk to the elder about certain things like maybe surrendering their license. And they work with you and hope to have a positive outcome. So that would be a good thing to check into. If, you know, you start worrying about a grandmother or a family friend that just might not be safe anymore, um, to sit down and maybe have a conversation with them and explain, you know, another way of them getting transportation to go to doctor's appointments or grocery store appointments or anything like that. So, and they always hope for a positive outcome because we all want to be safe. We want to be able to drive and get to our destination safely. And we also care about the older people that are driving too and want them to be safe and want them to be able to get to the places that they need to go um, without feeling uncomfortable driving if they're not comfortable. Another thing is... Um, in Hopkins, where, where I used to live, there was a PAX bus, and it was pretty much dedicated. People volunteered to drive the bus, and they would go and pick up elders or people that didn't have a way to get to a doctor's appointment, and they would go and pick them up and take them to the appointment and bring them back home. I think that would be a really good option also for someone that wasn't um, driving anymore because we know that other family members work and have jobs and other things and it might not always work out that they always are going to have someone to take them to an appointment that they need to go to. So today I explained why elders can be um, unsafe drivers and some possible solutions to um, making sure that they're safe and the rest of the people on the road are safe and thank you very much.